Hello, Alan. We need some luck, y'all. Yeah, we do. We need some luck. So guess what? We're going to go as southern as I could possibly get. Welcome to a little nice, warm Hoppin' John. All right. So we got yeah, Danny here. Yeah, brought this in last year. It was good. Yeah. All right. What all is in this? Rice. 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 Black-eyed peas. Bacon. And a little bacon, a little sausage, a little spice here and there. I think, I got, I think I'm ditch appropriate on the spice, so we should. Not too hot, not too plain. We talked a little bit last week. Uh, was it last week? We were talking about New Year's food traditions. Mm-hmm. And uh, some, some like in Poland, they have you eat a specific kind of food that's supposed to bring you good luck in the New right. Year or something. There's different traditions in different countries. Uh, that is true around the world. Uh, everybody has something that is their good luck charm. Now, Hoppin' John is a big one for the South because of, well, numerous wars we've had in the past. Uh, you know, one of the tactics was get rid of all the people food. Yeah. You know, you came through, you got rid of the big cornfields, you ran off the cows, you ate all the chickens. Yeah, and, Sherman. Yeah, well, you know, they yeah. come through Georgia and don't leave a corner stalk standing. <laughs> but what they didn't tear up and what they didn't destroy was, of course, the pigs ran off. Because, you know, they got better sense than the cows. All right. They didn't stand around and look at you. And the fields that they did leave were the feed fields. And black-eyed peas, up until then, were considered hmm. an additive for animal food. So when you oh. came back, you didn't have all your fresh goodies anymore. You had your dried goods. You had rices. You had your spices. And in this particular case, they were massively lucky that they had left the fields of the black-eyed peas. There you go. And there you go. You now attention. suddenly we oh, have the tradition of history lesson. little black-eyed peas on New Year's is good luck because was. it's... Yeah. it's why is it, it called was, Hoppin' John? Are, are we just celebrate it? that our fields were torched? <laughs> well, but they didn't torch this one, so we're going to eat of... Just Hoppin' John was, you know, you're happy, hopping up and down. It's, it's you know, it's food. You got to eat. You're living another year. Huh? You, you, you're, you, 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 and it's also a little bit of celebration because we're right now in the middle of also Twelfth Night around the world. And Twelfth Night was the 12, the days 12 of days Christ of Christmas. Yeah. yeah, my daughter was telling me about this yesterday. Mm -hmm. She was, and, you realize the 12 days of Christmas starts on Christmas. It's not before. Right, and it's actually the, the celebration of pretty much the dead center of winter. Because the solstice is right in the middle of it, the shortest day of the year. So from every day forward, as we as we sit here in brand new year, our days are getting slightly longer. Therefore, you're getting more sunlight. You're getting closer and closer to spring. Ah. And, you know, as I love to point out, you know, guys, we're only like five weeks away from Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. Oh, the stores reminded me the day after Christmas. Pictures oh, yeah. and catchers right. report of my. I, I want to know yeah. wh who was the who was the genius in marketing that I used to put out some of the Easter stuff. Yeah, and I walked through a store day. and I was, I'm looking at Easter, but I'm like, wow, really? Doug Cadbury. Can we <laughs> <laughs> can we can we get past one holiday at a time here, please? Man, Alan, you did it right. Yeah. I think everybody is completely. Good, man. That was good stuff. You got to you got to be bad. I mean, if you can't, if if you mess up rice and peas and sausage, you'd be surprised. <laughs> you got to be an awful man. Most awful. people screw up rice, though. That is uh, is that is the one of the two top is, topics I get asked in yeah. public all the time: cooking rice and frying chicken. Uh, Are you listening this morning on the Max? Uh, no, no. What, yeah. what, what you, you guys were talking about? Yeah, I just cannot fry chicken, no matter what I do. Well, how, oh, that what's can your, be fixed. How, that how, can how be difficult fixed. it is it to fry chicken? I'm not saying that to dish you. I, I don't, don't know. <laughs> Danny's like, she's got her mouth full of this stuff, and she's like, I don't I know. I can see there's a lot of, like, things out there. I mean, too too hot of the oil, the batter's not right, or you, uh, you know, The chicken's too cold. Yeah. That's, oh. That is usually oh. the big one, is that it's coming out of the refrigerator, and you're trying to beat the cold and the heat and the batter and the seasoning, and it's it's an uphill battle. Of good old Harlan Sanders solved it by converting pressure cookers for water for canning into uh, oil, so he could pressure cook that chicken. That is what a Kentucky Fried Chicken actually means. Mm -hmm. It was cooked in a pressure cooker. You ain't gonna do that at home. Mm -mm. So you and I will chat. I I, I, will <laughs> there is a, there I can solve your fried chicken dilemma. I just, the there's... batter never stays on. The batter just comes right off. Right, and that, that's because you haven't doubled or tripled battered. 
and I didn't know that till today. Now, will the same answers you give her for chicken, will that also be the same answer you would give to somebody for okra? Okra of okra, you get the the slightly slimy effect. Ah. So if you're going to do fried okra, slimy. one real big secret is sneak just a little bit of cornstarch into your into your coating, and that will give you a faster, stickier coating that will hang on it and help the other coating stay. Now, of also doing a double dredge on your okra will work really well, a.k.a. You, you, you rinse it, you get it ready to go, you roll it around in the flour, then you roll it through an egg wash, and then you roll it through the flour again. Uh, I tell you what, I had good over the holidays. Someone baked some okra. I'd never heard of that. Mm, so it's, like, it, it, it's very yeah. similar to, to like the fried okra, except you don't have to eat all the fried around the outside, which is good. I like fried okra. That's but the flavor like, well, that's right there, man. Good, throw the a little fry. salt on it, throw it in the oven. It was great. It wasn't slimy or anything. Mm-mm. Mm -mm. Now, uh, okra is one of those misunderstood foods that's, again, another hugely Southern staple. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we, it's a we, Delta oh, State uh, mascot. So, I mean, it's, 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 I worked with some Yankee there, from man. Massachusetts, and we okra. used to work with the River Kings or the River Queens, whatever you want to call them. He was, he was yapping about, I don't, yo, I don't know what you guys eat down here, this okra stuff. And I was like, oh, okay, man. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, weirdo. <laughs> yeah. oh. I don't know what to say to that one. We, <laughs> I like them apples, ah. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, we we, yeah. we, we do good. So, you know, there's a lot of just kind of good old down-home secrets to cooking that net sometimes didn't get passed down. So uh, there are little secrets of one easy trick to perfect wings because a lot of people Go try to do here. wings at home, yeah. right? But they're never, they're always raw in the center kind of burn on the outside, roll in the center. You know what, guys? Pre-cook them. Oh. Bake them the day before and then batter them and fry them. Oh. And now they're everything you want. And now you don't have to I worry about making make sure they're wings. cooked all the way through. So just a little, there's little tricks and stuff, especially in the restaurant business. Like they never work directly from like out of the freezer. You know, we get home at night at 6, 7 o'clock at night. You know, we're looking in the freezer going, oh, we forgot to thaw anything. And, you know, so we have this battle in the kitchen. Uh, so, like, this dish right here, uh, this is just standard good old-fashioned rice or a rice mix, if you wish. Follow the instructions on the water. But the trick is turn it down on low for the last half of it and just let it. Let it sit there and Slow. do its thing and soak up the water, and you don't Slow get that big. Hmm. You don't get that big sticky lump. You know, <laughs> it's, does that allow you for like a better other. margin for error too? That it's like you don't you, you have a bigger window where you don't risk overcooking it. Yes, of uh, the, the great thing about high heat, it's for searing and getting a coating on something. Low heat is very forgiving because now that rice could have soaked up all that water. It could still be sitting there for that extra. Oh, I don't know, commercial. <laughs> well, you're waiting for the commercial break to go check on the kitchen again. Uh, I'm not an advocate of a TV in the kitchen, you obviously. Single oh, guys yeah. cooking. I would, die. I would not survive. Oh, no. no but I got one in the bathroom. <laughs> I got one in every room. I don't like to miss anything. And they're all on the same channel. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You should do single guys cooking. Everything is high heat. High heat. Quick. Get it done. Yeah. And get back to <laughs> Watching TV or whatever. It's no, 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 no. Heat. See, you put it on low heat and you come back at the commercial break yep. and you have better tasting food. However hot it'll get to. <laughs> Pizza at 450. Hunger Man Swanson 450. Oh, right. oh no. <laughs> get them done. Uh, uh, uh. Broiling is for finishing. It's not for cooking. All right. So hop, hop and John, is that what you call this? This is good old-fashioned hop and John. Rice, bacon, a little bit of sausage and black eyed peas. Surprised you didn't bring any Johnny cakes with you. You know, it was a debate because I've got these great Northern little food? I got these great little Mickey Mouse pancake uh pancake shapes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it could happen. The Mickey Mouse will make it. He appearance. just said that's carpet bagger food, is he right? Johnny cakes? Pancakes in the south, Johnny cakes from the north. Am I right on Well, that? you know, it's still basically whatever you want to call a corn a cornbread fritter. All right. It is still cornbread and it's fried. That's even where you got hush puppies from. Big old wad of hut, corn, corn meal. Throw it in the deep, deep fat fryer, and it came out a little ball of bread. There it is. Bread balls. Win yep. win. Alan the food dude.